The 1912 sinking of the luxury liner Titanic shocked the world. Here are some little-known survivor stories that reveal some of the horror and bravery of that event. The Orphans Michelle Navratil Sr., like many other European immigrants at that time, dreamt of a better life in America. He was in the midst of a divorce from his wife, who had gained custody of their two children, Michelle and Edmund, when Navratil decided to make a bid for a new beginning. Navratil gained permission from their mother, Marcel, to take the two boys, then aged two and three years, during the Easter break. He then seized the opportunity to abscond with his children and head to the New World. Unfortunately, he chose the Titanic for his daring escape, registering the family as second-class passengers using false names to avoid being tracked by the French police. Michel Jr. later recalled the experience starting as an enjoyable holiday, where, as he looked down the length of the hull, the ship was a splendid sight. He and his brother would play on the forward deck and were thrilled to be on board. The tragic night that the ill-fated ship struck an iceberg, Navratil Sr. entered his family's cabin with another unidentified man and together they carried the two small boys down to the lifeboats. Michelle Jr. and Edmond got one last glimpse of their father as he placed them into the lifeboat, the very last lifeboat to leave the ship. Although only three at the time, Michelle Jr. never forgot his father's message to his mother that he still loved her dearly and had been expecting her to follow them, to live happily in the peace and freedom of the new world. The boy's father sadly perished in the icy waters, leaving his two surviving sons, the only children, to be rescued from the disaster without a parent or guardian. In the media frenzy following the horrendous sinking, Michelle Jr. and Edmond became quite a media sensation. They were temporarily cared for in the home of another friendly French-speaking survivor, Margaret Hayes, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, as the authorities tried to track down their relatives. Because the two children, dubbed the Titanic Orphans, spoke no English and had been travelling under the false names John and Fred Hoffman, this proved a very difficult task. A 1912 newspaper article described how the children responded to questions from the French consul with a simple we oui, because they were preoccupied with the new toy boats they had somewhat insensitively been given. That same newspaper article also gave insight into the tragedy's underlying class divide. When asked by the reporter whether the boys could be properly identified by tracking the tickets purchased by their father, Hay's father replied that he had never travelled second class or steerage, so did not know. The survival rates between the various classes of passengers aboard the Titanic was dramatically different, with 201 of the 324 first class travellers making it off the ship alive, but only 181 of the 708 third class travellers surviving. Michelle Jr much later realised that he and Edmund had been extremely lucky, commenting that amidst the vast differences of people's wealth on the ship, if they hadn't been in second class, they would have died. The publicity surrounding the Titanic disaster eventually saved the boys, as their photographs appeared in newspapers all around the world. Their mother Marcel, at home in France and with no clue as to where her sons had disappeared to, noticed their photo in the morning paper and, just over a month later, reunited with them in New York and took them back to France. Michelle Jr., who became a philosophy professor, is known as the oldest surviving male of the infamous sinking, dying in 2001 at the age of 92. His brother Edmund became an architect, but having been a prisoner of war during World War II, his health declined and he passed away in 1953. The story of the so-called Titanic orphans was one happy ending amongst the hundreds of sad accounts from the Titanic. Mazabumi Hosono 
The only Japanese person aboard the Titanic was civil servant Masabumi Hazono. He had been in Russia researching its public transport, and he boarded the Titanic for home as a second-class passenger. At the time of the collision, he was asleep in his cabin and awoken by a steward's frantic knock and the clatter of panicked footsteps in the hallway. However, Hazono was blocked from going to the Titanic's boat deck where lifeboats were already being launched because a crewman assumed him to be a third-class passenger. The officer stated that because he was a foreigner, he would have to wait on the lower deck. Hazono later wrote that the scene was terrifying and chaotic, with passengers scurrying back and forth and white flashes exploding above as the crew set off emergency flares. Finally arriving at the lifeboats, he was again turned away, but alternating between contemplating his own demise and the hope of seeing his wife and children again, he suddenly sought any chance of survival. From one of the rapidly filling lifeboats came the call that it had space for another two passengers, and another man hopped in. Hazono had felt that he should go down with the ship, but quickly joined the man in the lifeboat, which pulled away to the echoing screams of those drowning. Hazono ultimately endured condemnation in both the US and Japan for taking a space on a lifeboat and not relinquishing his life. He was falsely described as a stowaway in one account and wrongly accused of disguising himself as a woman. After making it home, Hazono was temporarily sacked from his government job and denounced in the press as dishonourable, immoral and cowardly. His ostracism brought shame to his family even long after his death in 1939. Later research showed that he had helped others to lifeboats before him and acted no differently from other Western male survivors. His powerful memoir is the only one first penned on Titanic letterhead, which was in his pocket when he began writing it on the rescue ship Carpathia. Years later, with the 1997 film Titanic, honour was restored to his family, to the relief of his grandson, Haruomi Hazono, who is a leading member of the band Yellow Magic Orchestra. Noelle Leslie. Already known as a countess and philanthropist, Noelle Leslie probably made her greatest mark on history by taking charge of one of the Titanic lifeboats and helping steer it to safety. A relatively hands-on aristocrat who had trained in nursing, she was travelling with the intention of joining her husband, the Earl of Rothes, who was in the US and Canada on business. Lady Rothes, as she was known, manned the tiller on lifeboat 8, steering it clear of the massive sinking liner. Helping to command the lifeboat, in concert with able seaman Tom Jones, who had swiftly decided to employ her leadership skills, Rothes took the helm for over an hour, then assisted in rowing it for hours towards the rescue ship. In the meantime, she was trying to console and calm a young Spanish newlywed whose husband had disappeared into the wreck. She also tried to boost the morale of her fellow passengers by leading them in singing songs, all cheering when the Carpathia was sighted. Once on board the rescue ship, Rothes continued caring for the passengers, devoting herself to the women and children from steerage, the poorest passengers, and sewing clothes for their babies. After her return to dry ground, Lady Rothes shied away from the publicity and fame that rightly touted her heroism and was quoted as saying, I have done nothing. She praised other occupants of the lifeboat, in particular the cool-headedness of seaman Tom Jones, with whom she maintained a regular correspondence. She gave him and steward Alfred Crawford inscribed silver pocket watches. In return, Jones sent her the brass number plate from their lifeboat, and the pair continued to exchange letters until her passing in 1956. 